Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We're here today on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode, episode 2083 of the Cabral Concept. If you want to check out all the research-based links today, you will find them at stephencabral.com forward slash 2083. Today, we're going to be going over the missing cofactors for absorbing vitamin D3. I'm sure by now during this pandemic, you've heard about the importance of vitamin D3, although there are always wild uh, stories of naysayers and people who like to just simply try to make a name for themselves um, with you know different natural health-based categories. Uh, there are tens of thousands of studies on vitamin D3, showing how important it is for not just the immune system. So vitamin D3, rightly so, gets a very uh, a lot of notoriety for the immune system. But vitamin D3 is essential for building healthy and strong bones. That includes young children as well as adults as well. So we know that it's needed for the immune system. We know that it's needed for the bones. It's needed for your metabolism. It's needed for weight loss. It's needed for your vision, right? Your eyes. It's needed for putting muscle on and the nice uh, metabolism it's needed for. It's needed for your thyroid, which regulates overall metabolism. Vitamin D has been known, clinically proven, to help prevent cancer. So when we look at this, we have to understand is that vitamin D is used in almost every single process inside of the human body. And that is because we get it and have been meant to get it uh, every single day from the sun. So as human beings, we have been somehow told now over the past few decades that the sun is bad for us, uh, that we need to stay out of the sun, that we shouldn't get a tan. And you know the truth is that nothing could be further from the truth because yes, you don't want to get a sunburn. Yes, uh, you don't want to damage your skin in that way. But the way that we metabolize vitamin D the best is actually direct exposure to sunlight. So when our skin is exposed to sunlight, we are able to synthesize and make vitamin D naturally. And that's why it's called the sunshine vitamin. The problem is with all the sunscreens that we wear, the hats that we cover up with, the sunglasses that we put over our eyes, the you know, the, the inside, we stay inside all day long that we're typically not getting a tan. So a lot of people believe because it's summertime and whatever part of the world you may be living in, uh, that you're getting enough vitamin D or you see sunlight outside, so you're getting enough vitamin D, but it's not the case. You actually need to maintain a tan in order to have proper levels of vitamin D and believe it or not, the latest statistic is that 42% of people are deficient in vitamin D. Now that's 42% percent, basically like one out of two people are deficient in vitamin D. However, that's a true deficiency. That doesn't even mean suboptimal. And our, in our practice, we would say about 80% of people are suboptimal. That means eight out of 10 people are not within the 50 to 70 nanograms per deciliter. And that's super important to look at that. So when you're testing your vitamin D levels, it doesn't just matter that you're a 32, right? Because the range is between 30 and 80. No, it's not. And that is, it's really important. We saw this as well during the pandemic that those people with the lower levels, uh, lowest levels of vitamin D fared the worst. Really important because all we need to do uh, in many cases is boost vitamin D levels and we'll see a better outcome. Is that the cure all? Of course not. But boosting vitamin D does boost the immune system. That's clinically proven. So this is really important. So if we're not getting our vitamin D from the sun, a lot of people say, well, just eat fortified vitamin D foods. The problem with eating fortified vitamin D foods is that it's typically vitamin D2, which is not the healthiest form of vitamin D. It's uh, much harder on the liver and certainly a lot more synthetic, nothing that I would necessarily recommend. I recommend vitamins that are more bioidentical to what you would receive from nature. And vitamin D3 is one of those. So basically there's vitamin D1, vitamin D2, and there's vitamin D3. We recommend vitamin D3. Now again, you can get your vitamin D from whatever source you choose to. If you're able to get it from the sun, great. I recommended a, a vitamin D lamp that's not for tanning, but you can actually get vitamin D from it. You could certainly use that, but you do have to test your levels. That's extremely 
important. If you're not testing your vitamin D levels, then you don't actually know if your vitamin D levels are adequate or not. And I'm not sure if it's this week or not. You would have heard an intro if it was this week, uh, but we're actually trying to give away vitamin D lab tests because we believe it's that important. Remember, uh, the company that I founded, Equal Life, is, is a mission-driven company. It puts people over profits. If we are in, able to better invest into our community, into our people, to teach them, they will teach then further and future generations to come. So the more knowledge we can get to people, of course, the more that we want to do. But you have to test your vitamin D levels. And if you're testing your vitamin D levels, ask your PCP, if you're running through your PCP, if not, you can do it right at home. Um, you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash labs, and you'll be able to find a vitamin D test right there. You can do it right at home. And you want to be, you want to look for 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That's what you're looking for, right? That's the lab test. And again, you want to be between a 50 and a 70. That's ideal. If you're over 80, it's too high unless you're working with a healthcare practitioner. It's pushing the immune system too much. It's most likely bringing too much calcium into your bloodstream. And if you're below a 50, it's just suboptimal. So you're not going to get all of the cancer protection benefits, the immune benefits, the metabolism, the thyroid, the vision, the good quality sleep, the reduction in depression they've shown with higher levels of vitamin D. So these are all, again, I don't want to keep trying to convince you of why it's so important. I'll give you a dosage to take towards the end. Uh, but just remember that if you're in a city, there's tall buildings, you're not really getting a tan, there's pollution, there's smog in the air that's blocking a lot of the sunlight. If you're putting on sunscreen every day, you're most likely you're low in vitamin D. There's just no doubt about that. So what I wanted to share with you though, is that a lot of people are taking vitamin D3. So they're taking about 35 IUs per pound of body weight, which is typically what I recommend. So again, this goes for children, it goes for adults. Um, and, and again, the average adult, it, uh, the the I mean FDA requirements you have to keep in mind when you look at the daily allowance it's simply to prevent disease right so we look at vitamin C or a vitamin D we're trying to prevent what scurvy with vitamin C rickets with vitamin D okay but that's such a small amount in order to be able to do that that does not mean that you are optimal it doesn't mean that you're boosting your immune system at all so most adults need about 4,000 IU's of vitamin D every single day that's every day not some days and it's not best to take vitamin D and I've shared this before 10,000 I use a couple times a week or 50,000 I use once a week that is one of the worst ways to take vitamin D and you have to keep in mind that is a conventional medicine way of taking vitamins which means that it's wrong and the reason why it's wrong is that you are asking your body to assimilate a mega dose of a vitamin that it would never get that way in nature a true traditional naturopath, a true naturopath is going to do things as close to nature as possible. Now, you might say, well, we should just get our vitamin D from the sun. And I would agree with you, except for the fact that not everybody's able to go out during the day and get a tan. And also, especially if you live like in New England, uh, you have to understand you're not getting a tan no matter how hard you try from October through about May maybe even early June. So you don't have a lot of opportunity to be able to get a tan, which means you do have to supplement in one way, shape, or form. That's just the way that it is. So we have people take about uh, 4,000 IUs a day uh, for most adults. Again, the only way to know your dosage is to take a dosage like 35 IUs per pound of body weight uh, on a daily basis and then test after about a month. That's the only way to know if you're at the right dosage. However, I want to share with you this is that some people will take the right dosage for their body weight, yet their levels still won't be between that 50 and 70. So like, for example, I've got my daily nutritional support right here, right? So in this, um, you've got about 400 uh, IUs of your vitamin D and, um, you, and I take four drops a day. So that's 4,400 IUs of vitamin D a day. So that, that's adequate. That's great for my body. But a lot of people, they might just take vitamin D and that's it. And they don't see their levels rise, even though they're taking vitamin D. Why is that? Well, that's what we want to share with you today. And this is really important because vitamin D, first of all, is a fat soluble vitamin. There are only four main fat soluble vitamins. We've got A, we've got D, we've got E, 
and we've got K, right? So those are our fat-soluble vitamins. It's extremely important that those vitamins are taken with fat during a meal. The rest of the vitamins, they're more water-soluble. We're not, talking about, we're not gonna talk about liposomal vitamins or anything like that today. But what we're talking about is if you're not taking your vitamin D with a meal that has fat in it, you are most likely not absorbing that vitamin D to a greater level. And that's why your levels may not be that great. This is really important because especially for women, especially for women below the age of 27, when you're trying to add your last little bit of bone that you can for the body, you want to make sure that you're getting your vitamin D and you're getting it with a higher fat meal. Now, not high fat, just fat at the meal. Avocado, um, nuts, seeds, uh, eggs, anything with fat that you would like that's going to work. And just again, it doesn't, it's not hard to do, but I want to share with you a study on this. This is really important. So taking vitamin D uh, with the largest meal of the day increased vitamin D levels in the blood by about 50% after just two to three months. Pretty great. Now I want to make sure that you're not taking it with your dinner meal. I'll be talking about that in just a moment. But again, Take it with your largest meal of the day. That would work. You could do it at lunch. Uh, we typically have our people take it in the morning. I'll give you a reason why in just a moment. Uh, but here's another one. Consuming vitamin D alongside a fat-heavy meal increased vitamin D levels by 32% after 12 hours compared to a fat-free meal. Nuts and avocados and seeds and eggs are all nutritious sources that could help. Okay, so... Really interesting, that factor right there. But now you might be saying, well, I've already been taking my vitamin D with some nut butter or some avocado, whatever it is, and my levels still aren't getting me to 50 to 70. What gives? Okay, now these are the essentially missing cofactors that a lot of people are not taking with their vitamin D. Here they are right now. So I'm going to go through them. Um, I'm going to go through probably the most important one first, and that is vitamin K2. Uh, menaquinone, MK7, is one of the most important for vitamin D, not just vitamin D synthesis, but how vitamin D works in the body. So let's say that you're getting vitamin D from the sun. Let's say you're getting vitamin D from supplement, whatever it might be. When your body uh, gets takes in vitamin D, however it, it is getting it, it's going to start to make the blood just a little bit more calcium retentive. So that means a little bit of calcium is drawn into the blood. This is why a lot of people will cherry pick studies and show that vitamin D is not good for humans and that it hardens the arteries. You have to understand, those studies are based on conventional medicine thinking, giving people 100,000 IUs at a time. 300,000 IUs at a time. I talked about this years ago on my show. Not 4,000 IUs like you would typically get on a daily basis. We're talking about 400,000 ridiculous dosages, which brings calcium into the bloodstream. But if you even understand that part and you were to take a um, vitamin that contained vitamin uh, K2, MK7, which is a more absorbable form, what happens is your body then is able to prevent calcium buildup in the arteries because MK7 will help to remove it from the arteries. So again, uh, you can take it with a daily activated multivitamin, something like the daily nutritional support, which already has vitamin K1 and MK7 in it. That's why you don't necessarily need to take a vitamin D with extra vitamin K if your daily activated multivitamin or your daily nutritional support already has the MK7. Really important, but that is gonna allow you to improve bone mass, keep the calcium out of the arteries, et cetera. All right, the next one is omega-3s. You might say, how do omega-3s help with it? Well, omega-3s are used along with vitamin D for a lot of the other uh, anti-inflammatory based components of how the immune system works and how the immune system stays regulated. So this has everything to do with Th1 and Th2 immune dominance, uh, allowing the body to stay much more balanced at a uh, naturally, naturally healthy anti-inflammatory level. I'm trying to say that the proper way for the FDA. So that's really, really important as well. Uh, zinc is another one. You may have heard of zinc before, 
But this is a vital role in terms of bone, muscle, vision that vitamin D uh, interplays with as well. The next two you may not have heard about as much, and that is boron and iodine. Now, boron and iodine are also used along with vitamin D for bone synthesis, uh, for a healthy immune system, a healthy thyroid, and a healthy metabolism. Again, this is really important to note because all of these should be in your daily activated multivitamin or your daily nutritional support. So additional is not needed. I always get a lot of questions, you know, don't you need to take a vitamin D3 with a K2, with a this? You don't. You need your vitamin D3 because it's going to be a little higher dosage at, at a 1,000 IUs, 2,000 IUs, 4,000 IUs, whatever it might be. And then you take it along with the daily activated multivitamin, whatever you're using, your daily nutritional support, like a lot of people in our community do, that contains all of those other cofactors as well, right? Because you don't need to load up on the other ones. Really, really important. Now, the next one is extremely important for bone formation, as well as oxygenation of those red blood cells, and that's calcium, magnesium, and vitamin C. So the cofactors for vitamin D that you want to get on a daily basis as well are vitamin K2, omega-3s, zinc, boron, iodine, calcium, magnesium, and vitamin C. Now, there are two other caveats that I want to share with you right now. The one that's going to seem strange is exercise. Believe it or not, exercise has been shown to improve and help the overall uptake of vitamin D3. So not to be overlooked, we'll be talking about that more uh, this coming Thursday on the show as well. And then the last caveat I would give you is that I know absorption uh, is improved with the largest meal, but that's typically because there's going to be more fat, is that you don't want to take your vitamin D3 typically before bed. It seems, and I would agree that this makes sense, that most of the synthesis should be taking place during the day just like we would be exposed to sunlight during the day. And that makes sense, right? From a naturopathic perspective, you would get your vitamin D somewhere between maybe like the 10 and the 2 hour, right? That's going to be the strongest part of the sun. Uh, and that's when your absorption would take place, not to the greatest degree. And uh, what could happen is that taking vitamin D at night could actually compete for absorption with melatonin or melatonin production. So I definitely recommend taking your vitamin D3 with breakfast uh, in your breakfast smoothie if you'd like, uh, or you could certainly take it at lunch. Make sure you take it with some fat at that meal, but honestly, that's as easy as a half an avocado, uh, a tablespoon or so of um, some healthy fat, whether it be olive oil or nuts or seeds or whatever it is that your healthy fat is uh, that you would like that's going to help improve right away the absorption. And then if possible, take your vitamin D3 with a good daily activated multivitamin or something like the daily nutritional support, which is going to guarantee you get all of the cofactors for the healthy levels of cancer prevention, healthy levels of inflammation, uh, for the vision support, the muscle, the bone, and so much more, all right? So that's how we do it. I wanted to share that with you, and uh, hopefully that will help people that are having difficulty raising their vitamin D3 le levels uh, make it that much easier. Thank you so much for all of the show notes from today. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 20. 85. Sorry, today is 2083. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2083 for all the cofactors. Take care, everyone.